With San Francisco returning to work on Tuesday, we saw several veterans sit out. So we got an extended look at some of San Francisco's younger players. So in this video, I wanted to break down what really stood out. Starting out with the quarterbacks, Brock Purdy had a pretty nice day returning to practice, throwing four touchdowns and only one interception. On the first throw of practice, Brock Purdy let his intentions be known when he found Ricky Pierce on the post pattern for about a 45 yard touchdown. On this play, D'Amador Lenore was in coverage and he had pretty good coverage at that, but Purdy had a better ball and placed it right on Ricky Pearsall's hands. After this, Purdy continued his efficient day going 9 of 14. On his interception though, he was targeting Chris Conley on the post pattern and with Lenore in coverage, he underthrew it. Regardless of this mishap though, Purdy was able to go off in the red zone period throwing three touchdowns. His first was to Juwan Jennings with Charvarius Ward in coverage. Jennings did a good job of creating separation, but Brock Purdy also put it right on him. On his next touchdown, Purdy was able to find Jordan Mason on a quick out. Purdy once again did a good job with his ball placement on this route. Purdy's final touchdown once again came from Jennings where he found him in the back of the end zone. Throughout this entire camp, I think Purdy has shown that, that he's a true franchise quarterback for San Francisco. And even though he throws a few interceptions during the camp period, I do think it's often to work on his game. Moving on to San Francisco's backup quarterback battle, I continue to think Joshua Dobbs is winning it. Allen really wasn't able to get anything going today, meanwhile Dobbs had two touchdown passes during the red zone period, including one to Debo Samuel on the fade with Ambry Thomas in coverage. Moving off San Francisco's quarterbacks and into their running backs, Christian McCaffrey is out with a calf strain for at least a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Mitchell has missed another practice, which isn't a good sign for the often injured back. But Jordan Mason as a starting back continues to make the most out of his opportunities. When Brock Purdy was targeting him in the red zone period on that quick out, he was able to haul it in and get the touchdown. Even though a lot of people don't think Jordan Mason is a receiving back, so far this offseason, he's looked like one, and it's a good thing considering who he's filling in for. San Francisco's backfield also saw a familiar face return in Matt Breida. Matt Breida offers a speed element San Francisco was looking for out of their rookie back Ariendo. He ran his 40-yard dash in 4.38 seconds and has found his most success in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And with all the injuries right now, he makes a lot of sense as a plug-and-play option. But moving off San Francisco's running backs and into their tight ends, San Francisco's second-year tight end, Cameron Latu, who's really struggled to submit himself on San Francisco's roster, had himself a nice gain today when he picked up a flat pass and ran for about 20. San Francisco's other second-year tight end, Braden Willis, was led right into Tatum Bethune by Allen, and it was the loudest hit of the entire day. Moving off San Francisco's tight ends and into their wide receivers, Juwan Jennings continues to prove he's one of San Francisco's best. His first touchdown, for instance, came on San Francisco's best corner, Charvarius Ward, and he was able to create pretty good separation on the slant pattern. Then his next came when he beat Lenore on a fade in the red zone period. Outside of Jennings, Pearsall looked promising at catching that deep touchdown pass early in practice. But shortly after, he re-aggravated his shoulder injury, which kept him limited earlier this offseason. And with the trade framework in place for Brandon Ayuk, this isn't good news for San Francisco, who is hoping for production out of the first round selection. Speaking of injuries, San Francisco's other rookie, Jacob Cowing, returned to practice today, and the speedster was able to haul in the pass from Joshua Dobbs for a touchdown. He also caught a quick screen from Brandon Allen. Cowing offers so much for San Francisco with his speed, and Kyle Shanahan can scheme around his size, so I think it's a match made in heaven, and Brock Purdy earlier in the offseason seemed to have a deadly match with him. Debo Samuel also had himself a nice day, catching that fade from Joshua Dobbs for a touchdown. Moving off San Francisco's wide receivers and into their offensive line, with John Feliciano once again missing practice, Dominic Puni looks entrenched at that right guard spot. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. He's extremely solid in his pass protection and looks pretty nimble out there. And players develop much more rapidly hitting the field. So Puni might be a player that can do that. And I'm betting he can. Outside of Dominic Puni, San Francisco's left tackle Jalen Moore gave up a sack to Yuter Grossmatos in the red zone period. Overall, looking at San Francisco's offensive line, there's some interesting young players like Dominic Puni or even Drake Nugent out of Michigan. But the thing is, they need to invest heavier at the position and definitely get Trent Williams on the field if they hope to make a Super Bowl run. Moving off San Francisco's offensive line and into their defensive line, as I was mentioning, they were without Hargrave, Bosa, and Floyd today. 
but they still were able to register a few sacks. Gross Matos, for instance, was able to get Purdy down in the red zone period. Moving into San Francisco's linebackers, D. Winters continues to look like he should be starting for San Francisco, or maybe some team in the league. He's so fast to get to the ball and looks like a mini version of Dre Greenlaw out there. Today, Winters was able to lead the team with five tackles and a pass breakup while starting at linebacker. San Francisco's rookie out of Florida State, Tatum Bethune, also had a nice day and he absolutely drilled Braden Willis on the hit, who was the loudest of the entire practice. I also think Jalen Graham is a nice player when he's on the field. He can flow sideline to sideline with ease and can lay a thud on people. I don't know many teams who can lose a guy like Dre Greenlaw and be okay to start out the season. But San Francisco, thanks to Johnny Hollins in part, can. Moving off San Francisco's linebackers and into their corners, Diamador Lenore had himself a mixed day. First, he was the corner in coverage on Ricky Pearsall for that deep touchdown to start practice. But he did come back with that interception on Chris Conley on that underthrown pass from Brock Purdy. Lenore was also able to stop Chris Conley before the end zone to help end a drive during the red zone period. Outside of Lenore, San Francisco's other corner, Charvarius Ward, gave up a touchdown pass to Juwan Jennings. It was also our first time not seeing Isaac Yadam in practice, so that meant that Renardo Green got work on the nickel and outside. Throughout the entire practice, Green showed off aggression in his run fits and proved to be sticky in coverage. Towards the end of practice, for instance, Renardo Green was able to force an incompletion with Brock Purdy trying to target Chris Conley. San Francisco's other new addition this offseason, Rock Yasin, had himself a pretty nice day. He was able to punch the ball out of Juwan Jennings' hand, stopping him from securing the pass from Allen. During this training camp and offseason period, it's truly been impressive how San Francisco made their weakest point on their defense, arguably their strongest. Their starter last year in Ambry Thomas, for instance, is definitely in the back half of this group. He struggles to track down deep balls, meanwhile Renardo Green and Isaac Yadam do a great job when the ball's in the air and not freaking out. But San Francisco's corners won't be the only ones to see change in the secondary. Their safeties also will. Ufunga probably won't start the season, so that means either George Odom or their rookie Malik Mustafa will. As far as George Odom's day went, he had a nice pass breakup in team drills, but he was also the safety in coverage on that deep touchdown to Ricky Pearsall. Throughout this entire camp, Odom's done himself a pretty nice job, but I still would like to see San Francisco maybe plug in Malik Mustafa. I just think he's such a high potential player, and if you plug him in, that starts his development right away. I'm not a fan of just letting your best players stay on the bench. If it was up to Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy still might be there. But jokes aside, San Francisco's other starting safety and their second year player, Jair Brown, is positioning himself nicely for a breakout year. Today he was able to come on the safety blitz and get a would-be sack. Overall, these are just some players who stood out on Tuesday's training camp for San Francisco, and I'd like to hear who you're excited to see heading into this preseason. It would also mean a ton to me if you could like and subscribe, and as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.